Hello and welcome to Goa 365's Story Behind the Story. Now in this program we have been taking up various issues which are not so obvious and not so in your face. We are taking up issues which are which have got a lot of what do you say Pardde Ki Piche. That's why the our program is Story Behind the Story. And one issue that we are taking up today, we have not taken it up earlier at least in so much of depth, depth is the violence against women and sex trafficking which is happening in government nobody wants to admit neither the government nor society because it is the question of what you say is it honor respect violence against women is not being looked at sex trafficking because it probably the the, the uh, you know the name of our state would get spoiled but both these things are happening but but they keep it so today to discuss these issues and try and bring them out from under the carpet whether forcefully or otherwise is a esteemed panel I, which I am going to introduce now. With me is Prakash Karma, Senior Journalist. Prakash Pap, welcome to our show. Other Vegas of Bailache Ekvot, she has been in the fight against, uh, uh, you know, for women, against the violence uh, being perpetrated on women, behind doors and outside also in the open. Other Pap, ma'am, welcome to our show. Arun Pandey of Earth, he is probably one of the you know torches in the darkness, so as to say, who has been fighting against this uh, sexual exploitation, uh, trafficking, literally banging his head against the wall for so many years. Arun Bhatt, welcome to our show. And a colleague of his also, Juliana Lohar from Earth, who is not only with Arun in this fight, but also trying to bring in, uh, get victims. Uh, on their feet economically because though we say that uh, money is the root of all or cause of all evils it's all necessary we want to live with respect on this earth Julana ma'am welcome to our show Prakash Bab you are a journalist you have been a journalist for a long time you are involved in a lot of things I will be asking you quite a few uh, questions hard questions on how the media is not taking up these issues including me I am sorry to say so Prakash but, but first we would like uh, to introduce you the panel uh, to our audience. Parakra. Yes, uh, with me here is Arun Pandey. He is the uh, director of ARZ, ARZ, that is Annyar Rahi Zindagi, an uh, organization which works for traffic to women, their economic uh, rehabilitation, uh, survivors, and all that. Uh, Arun is working with this ARZ for, he is a founder director and working for uh, more than 25 years in Vasco and all over Goa. And he has been also taking up various issues related uh, practices like uh, Devadasi practice which is prevalent across the borders and which comes into Goa also. So varied issues of uh, all these women, exploited, commercial sexual exploitation, trafficking, all these aspects and how to deal with them. Uh, even for uh, schemes for their rehabilitation, legislations amendment to legislation, all these aspects he handles. I have with me Auda Bhai Vegas. I may not uh, introduce her separately, Goa no sir. Any uh, domestic violence or any exploitation of girl, child or whatever, and Auda's name will come first. Auda also is uh, uh, running this one-stop center in South Goa, where victims or survivors of this uh, uh, sexual exploitation or uh, uh, child victims, all these uh, they are looked after. Then I have Juliana Rohar, who is a colleague of Arun in Nair His Zindagi Earth, and also she is at the moment mentoring what is known as WISH, WISH Women's Initiative for Self Help. Women who come out of uh, sex trafficking, then sexual exploitation they are stigmatized in the society so they are not easily taken for employment economic empowerment becomes a big issue big struggle or the initially had started one uh, mechanical laundry where these women were employed and given one empowerment economic salary and all that but then said that uh, during covid entire economy collapsed hotels collapsed and in that uh, this laundry collapsed and they had to come out, struggle to come out with some alternatives. There's just different forms of violence now. 
In the beginning, it was the alcoholic husband or the mother-in-law mostly who hassled the woman. Violence originated there. But today we find that it's the drugs and other issues, especially the mobile. I had a case recently of a woman from outside the state. Her husband was contacting some other woman, other women on the, uh, what you call that, Instagram and talking to her language which is a mental torture for a wife. So I feel that violence against women is not restricted to a cut or a blood flowing. It is more mind, psychological, emotional, financial and these issues need to get addressed. Unfortunately, along with the issues that come up, our society is not growing. They are not thinking about the psychological effects of violence. They are not thinking about the care, the love, the affection the woman gives her children even without anything to spend money on. And therefore I feel that this needs to be addressed. Then there are so many issues that uh, govern the violence against women. And so we conduct awareness programs with skits. We show you all forms of violence against women. We go to panchayats or we go to schools and colleges, everywhere. Now colleges and schools we will talk about violence in terms of sexual assault, etc, etc. And but to women, the battery that takes place, the beating that takes place, the violence against women doesn't come out more because it's a thickness and thinness of the walls. In the slum area when there is violence, you can hear it everywhere. But in a house like mine where there are thick walls, you can't get the sound out. I told but you, other men, you're, being, you're very diplomatic. But anyway, we, I will get into this detail uh, with you a little earlier. The thick and the thin walls, we'll have to see about this. Aruma, I uh, wanted to bring you into this now from uh, the area that you have been fighting so hard to bring out into the open, redress, address, whatever you want. No, thank you very much, uh, Arnana, for bringing sex trafficking uh, 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 for discussion because usually this is something which is neglected. Okay, and if we go to see is that the last 25 years we have been struggling, okay, in Goa uh, to people to realize that okay, this is happening in Goa. Uh, unfortunately, if you go to see the statistic shows, uh, uh, the, the 2021 NCRB data, uh, uh, National Crime Report Bureau data, shows that maximum number of cases were registered in Goa regarding sex trafficking. Among all India? Uh, all India. And we need to appreciate, okay, we need to appreciate uh, that the police has taken action. But on the other side, if you go to see is that the conviction has been zero. Uh, so, 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 so what is the message are we giving? Uh, 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 today, if you go to see, Goa is one of the major destination state. We recently did a study of five years of the girls who have been rescued in Goa by the Goa police. And we found that uh, in the last five years, 400 girls were rescued. And these are the number of the girls who have been rescued. And, and according to our estimate, uh, the, the number of the girls rescued would not be more than 10% of actually number of the girls who are being exploited uh, in Goa. And we found that the girls have been trafficked from nearly 25 states of India. So what does it show? It shows that we have an organized network in 25 states, the Goa traffickers have contact. And other than that, it's not only interstate other trafficking, but we also have other trafficking happening from Nepal, Bangladesh, okay, and Central Asia. So this is kind of an organized network which has been set up in Goa. Yeah, we do appreciate that some kind of action has been taken by the police and we say the maximum number of cases have been registered, but that's not enough. There is a need to, to, to go to the root cause of the, uh, the trafficking. So what is happening today is that we, we are uh, taking action against the traffickers who are arrested in Goa. But that is not enough. 
But till then, until no the conviction, no yeah. conviction. How yeah. is that? Uh, how how is that uh, punishment? It's not punishment. It is not punishment. It is what is happening. Is they are being arrested. arrested. Okay. And after arrested, they go on bail. And if you see in the majority of the cases, you find them habitual offenders, because this is a business for the traffickers, which brings a lot of money. Okay. And this is a business that we we call it without investment, you make money. So what is happening is they get arrested and again back. They are in the same business because, because as you rightly said, because there is no conviction, it doesn't work as a deterrent. Kya uh, this is a question that maybe we should ask the public prosecutor's office or the police because I am not saying it, but uh, what uh, uh, the uh, what uh, what the figures say is that without some sort of a nexus between these uh, traffickers and the powers that be, like the police and I don't know where, that uh, uh, it's not possible for it not to have any conviction, especially if they are habitual offenders. Now, I would like to, uh, I'll come back to you on that, but I would like to go to Juliana, ma'am, ma'am, uh, you explain to us, like, see, now there's a lot of this violence, there's a lot of this um, issues with you know, girls being exploited sexually. What would be the psychological impact and after they are rescued, then what? Something that you could uh, shed some light on? Uh, if you look at victims of uh, sexual violence, okay, when you talk about the psychological impact, okay, they may basically go through post-traumatic stress disorder. Okay? So when you talk about that, we mainly talk about them facing issues with anxiety, depression, sleep disorder. Now in our course of work with victims of sex trafficking, ours, we have defined the stages of the psychological impact on a victim. When a victim is initially inducted into the sex market, she resists. She resists the violence that is imposed on her. When you talk about violence, it is she faces all forms of violence. Physical, emotional, psychological, she is drugged, she is given alcohol, whereby she is forced to sleep with customers. At this stage is when she resists this and she wants to get out of it. It is at this stage when the fear factor is built into her where there is no control on her emotions, where there is no control on her decisions because all this is taken charge by the perpetrators. If she is rescued, she is very lucky and she is thankful to each one of us, whoever is providing her support. In case she is not rescued, she moves into the second stage, that is the stage of negotiation, whereby she is unsure of whether she is going to be continue in the sex market or come out in the society. At this stage, we find that she somewhere tries to get out of this market and at the same time, there is a lot of pull factor keeping her in. Here you find is that she somewhere gets into, because she has to entertain customers, whereby she is dependent on substance abuse because no person can sleep with, when she's inducted, she at least has to sleep with 10 to 15 customers. So it is not humanly possible. So she does get into different types of addiction and whichever customers go to her obviously they expect her to behave in a particular way and there you find she is increasingly dependent on substance abuse and in case she is not rescued at the stage of negotiation she moves into the final stage that is the stage of acceptance that is the stage where all of us we see her and we label her we call her whatever name we want to and we start building our own thoughts with her being as she is doing it for fun She's getting money, she's getting pleasure, she wants to be in this. So if you look at it and at the stage of ex acceptance is where she is she is somewhere dependent on the perpetrators. She is somewhere completely, when we talk about post-traumatic stress disorder, here we find her anxiety very high. We find her getting into depression. In our course of work, when we work with victims who have been in the stage of acceptance, we do find them going through various mood disorders. Okay, We do find them going through chronic depression. And it is here where they require services. They require services presently in Goa and as per the law, we have the state protective home which provides them with shelter. But do they only require shelter? Shelter with just being protected all the time? Or do they require services which will enable them to overcome the trauma, recover from the abuse that they have gone through. So in Goa, presently we have the state protective home which provides them a short stay, shelter, uh, sh care and shelter. 
and then we at ours we have initiated an economic alternative called wish women initiative for self help this initiative basically it's providing them with an it's providing them with economy they're getting an income where we where we have certain products which are being manufactured by the victims themselves we have various types of tissue rolls toilet rolls tissue paper toilet rolls where the victims are living in the community you are in vasco and they are producing this these uh, products and they getting an income once a victim is rescued and she joins this economic alternative she gets a monthly salary of 10000 along with this what is most important is we have a full time counselor a counselor which enables her to overcome the trauma that she has faced which enables her to recover from the abuse that she has faced psychological emotional and along with that we feel it's very important that we need to work with the family so we have the social workers who work closely with the family so as to in to ensure that they do not pull her back into the sex market again they do not start harassing her for financial with financial with uh, finances but bur- financial burden so we have the social worker which works with adult members and most important we find the children are highly impacted we find the in fact we have been working with nearly three generation in some cases and we find how the impact is so much on the children too so we do a lot of work on the children seeing that they are somewhere able to uh, uh, to overcome whatever stigma that the parents have faced and also to somewhere come into mainstream society so we work with the children and most important we provide the legal support to the victim especially when she's coming for deposition or if there are certain perpetrators who are harassing her to come back again into the sex market we work closely with them providing them with the legal services so we at wish we have a entire team of a psychologist a counselor a social worker and a lawyer to provide these services to the victims of sex trafficking here in goa thanks thanks jilan and this is like uh, i don't know if anybody who's gone through that type of a trauma can actually fully recover or fully it's 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 tough i mean like in any normal circumstances you 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 for example you meet with an accident or a minor or i mean like you're scarred for life literally and this this it's it's very very tough and it's it's pretty criminal that nobody is willing to acknowledge this anyway i'll get back to you to another bit rashpa what uh, you heard uh, julian and uh, you heard uh, yes arun babu so i mean uh, who, nobody talks about it in the media why you've been in the media for how many years now have you ever heard this is the first time i'm hearing i mean like you mean the more Like yes. You also from more than me. You are my sir. Yes. How is it? <laughs> Nobody talks about it. I agree is with it you. Criminal, right? I agree with you. What we do in Goa, I have worked for paper like the Hindu, yes. where these issues are taken on priority mm. and followed up. Mm. Here, as Arun said, if in Goa, local society doesn't take this trafficking and uh, sexual exploitation as serious issue. because our mindset is it is of migrant people who are from outside then whose responsibility it is to teach people this issue it is of the media so that is what second thing is first of all this issue are we sensitized enough are we aware enough are we making media people aware understand simple example i will give you justice jonai ne section 21 it says what is not to be done about a uh, um, uh, victim do we follow that well reporting po- posco act prevention of sexual uh, exploitation of children that act section 23 says what you, how is you sensitized your reporting should be all these issues so we should know our media who covers should understand what we find in goa as you earlier only say that police statistics so many uh, women were uh, uh, this uh, detained so many fellows were detained it is police based very uh, superficial reporting sanitized basically and 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 there is no follow parde ke piche the real actors are somewhere beyond with the technology it digitalized net net today there are issues raised in goa you must be aware some women's organization old goa church 
is equated to some correct sexual networking. Huh? Goa University, girls milta hai. Where is the research? Where is the details? Where unearthing of these things? Nothing is happening. Government also is not taking any yeah, action. Taking. Nobody is serious. If somebody, uh, somebody is government is not taking. the chief minister, he will be arrested immediately. I government think. is or, not or taking because as he said, unless society takes it seriously, society builds pressure and for society to make it serious, media's role is very important. You are right there. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, ma'am. Other ma'am, I would like to bring you in uh, to... Uh, uh, the drugs angle, you, you spoke about the drugs angle, what, what, uh, give us some uh, details and what exactly you meant. Today, children as well as husbands and even some women are getting used to taking drugs. Drugs is a big problem which is leading to other crimes. Even the noise, the violence that take place in the house is sometimes related to children. It's related to the father or, or even the mother. I'm sorry to say this. I feel bad because having worked for women all these years, I feel that today society is going any which way. And the violence is increasing, especially against the elderly. The son doesn't recognize his own mother, elderly mother. He wants her out of the house. And many a time in the middle of the night, we have to go and rescue that woman, bring her and fortunately now, I have the one-stop one center stop. and I'm able to keep her temporarily till I can take her to a shelter home somewhere. So the whole of society is getting infected with violence. Children abuse their parents and they go out at any time. And they mostly go to the north of Goa and they insist that on Saturdays they have to go to the north of Goa. I don't understand the logic behind this, but I think you do. I don't know. Okay. I think you do. I don't know why they come I to the north. I think there's a lot of drug scene in uh, in the north. But I don't drug know if oh, like I don't know if our locals. It's only the drug scene or alcohol also is quite uh, prevalent, very both, strong. Both. And and it's become a common factor. A pub factor. That once you go to the ninth standard, a girl child or a boy child, as I face it, is already on the beach side. Guzzling beers. Ninth standard? Ninth standard. Ninth standard. Tenth standard. Are you Fourteen and fifteen. I'm talking about this age. And then there is an excise law. You mean minors? You can't. Be. But you then can't I don't think that is more in the. Kind of and then, the just not there. Even uh, whenever I have gone for a panchinama for a, we have found bottles of alcohol there. And bottles of alcohol which were given to the children as well. Not just the, the abuser, but the children also drank it. So what we do is we try to bring them back to One Stop Center South Goa, where we have psychosocial counseling, we have legal help, we have medical assistance, our facilities, of course, the district hospital. But whatever we can do to help them get over the depression and the trauma caused by the violence, we Attend. Okay, uh, Adam, I would like to end this segment. We will go into the next segment because we have run out of time completely with this uh, section. Uh, so, I would like to end this uh, first uh, section. On this note, we will get back. So, I mean, this has been very interesting, but uh, we will uh, continue this because I don't think we will even scratch the surface in, in this first episode. Uh, thank you, Ragat Bab. Thank you, Arun Bab. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Thank you and keep watching. Go